Marty would uh, would play chess against each other, and he would just destroy me. But he was just a whiz at the chess game. And oh, yeah. the f photography was his thing. Did you guys all just shoot with him mostly back then? Well, he's he was the leader photographer, so mostly we did all the all the exercise shots with Artie, all the uh, outdoor shots with Artie, and then I did a lot with my wife too. Right, because she got to be pretty good at it, and I wanted to have some old, my own personal stuff. I got a lot of exercise shots with her in, in Gold's Gym. Does she shoot anymore? She well, did. of what I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a you're still, you're still Frank. Uh, we can still shoot you. No problem for us. You can shot, shot by. by. <laughs> no, those days are gone. Yeah. I'm hoping I did enough during that time. Now, you know, I'm 80 years old, so I'm just, just gonna take it easy, sit in this chair, sit back, watch other people do stuff. I need one of these photos from my office. That's what I need. I had, when I had my gym, I don't know if you remember, but I had a big mm -hmm. picture this big of you. The, you. the only photo I had in my gym was of Frank Zane. Yeah, black and white, I classic. I some photos out in the garage I'll give you when, you, when we're going. I asked Bruce, let's <laughs> go. Let's <laughs> <That's, that's, laughs> just clarify, uh, Frank wouldn't pick up my call, but he picked up his I call. And then, <laughs> okay, yes, I'd love one, man. That'd be great. That'd be an awesome birthday present. You know, that's all you have. Yeah. In the end, it's all that, that's all you have. Because the body fades, you know, you can hold on. Yeah. You up, Mike, you're at 52? Yeah, 53, yeah. yeah. Well, you're doing good for that age. I was in decent shape in my early 50s, too. But the older you get, the harder it gets. And the, the less motivated I was to keep doing it because there's, you know, there's no good reason to, to keep, up, keep doing this. My last show, I think I was 41. 1983, and I sort of looked at Bill Pearl's career as to when he did things in his last competition, he was 41, the Nabby Universe. Actually, I was in that against him. And of course, I always had my complaints about him because he was always smooth, you know, he was never really cut. But you know, he, he, know how to, he know, knew how to work that, he, he did real well. It's gotta be frustrating, someone that's. He just passed away, too. Yeah, he just passed. What about two weeks ago? And again, 90s. 91. So we were just looking at a bodybuilding poster today in my garage from 1983. It's funny you say that. It was your last year of competing in 83. It was the. Remember Charles Bradshaw? When no. He was promoting, he was the NPC chairman before. Before, uh, what was the guy's name? C.C. Sanders. Yeah, so you, you went old school promoters. Yeah. 83 means a lot to me because that was the first year I uh, uh, got on stage. It was the first year. Well, it was yeah. the last year. It was the last year, my first year. Wow. Just Samir, we know you look at that year. Won the year, and I just trained with Samir. Question for you, though, because like you said, it's, it's, it gets harder as you get older, and then the motivation may subside a bit, but you're extremely healthy, you know? For yeah, the, I don't get sick. Yeah, but you're like in good shape, you carry it well, you have a great frame, and you're 80 now. It's, what do you think it is that they don't comprehend? The kids, or, or, or even the 40 year olds, me, 50 years old, do, doesn't comprehend about training that could help me for the future. I always had this in mind, and basically is, don't, don't stay peaked. Stay uh -huh. less than your best. Always stay uh -huh. under. I always looked at 94% number. That's what you were what asking the whole way down. You I go. said that. I said that. And I said, don't I wonder if you, they don't, they won't understand that though. Society doesn't understand that. They think you should stay peaked. They think that Stone. looks better. You should always if you're climbing look. Mount Everest. You don't stay up there, do you? I agree. You with can't you. stay up there. You come down to base camp. You got. You can live in base camp, but you can't live at the top. Regroup. Get warm. Yeah. Get your food. Climb back up again. It's too much. It's too much of a, too much sacrifice to keep doing that. You know what you have to do with the dieting and mental framework. You know it eats away at you. It's, you're not meant to do that. That's so. I, I, 
just you saying that just living a balanced life is the most important thing. Being happy, enjoying yourself, doing things that make you happy, you know, being useful, making all that stuff. It's all positive feedback for you, you know, for your legacy. What percentage did you say to stay at when you're off season, for example? Oh, Is I can't really put a number on it. I just yeah. just made that up. Ninety-four. Yeah, I've got that was my average in high school. Ninety-four. <laughs> That smart. I, I, just, gradu I graduated first in my high school and I had a 94 average. Well, you've always been considered a, one of the smartest. Well, I, stu I studied though, you know, yeah. that's the thing. I always put in the work. It wasn't like things came naturally to me. I always did the work. Is that the most important? You said two things right now. Yeah. You always did the work and the balance of your mind. And then you also talked about going to the peak of the mountain and then coming back down, they obviously know that's a metaphor for training. You don't you don't step on stage and then try to hold that stage or, or that deficit of, of starving your body to be that beautiful. Yeah. You start feeding it again. Heal the body, heal the mind. How much of that is more important, or if it's not, tell me, how much more of balanced mind, refeeding the body, keeping it healthy, and the balance of life and giving and helping people and enjoying it relative to the sets and reps in the gym or the cardio in the gym. Well, it's what sustains you, you know. The thing is, I, I realized that I could only peak one time a year. Even doing it twice was too much. Hmm. One time a year yeah. for the, uh, in the autumn, basically, I looked at it this way. I was born late June, and so the, my, my periods of, of most growth in my life were July, August, September, and that paralleled my competitive career. I was always in shape in the fall. And so I just, that was what was natural for me. And if I tried to do more than that, I wasn't as good. That's what some now, people it could, do in the fall it's, stage. It's some, some of that's physical and a lot of it's mental. And that's longevity. That's, that's what yeah. people refer to as a flow state. Don't you're spend it all. Yeah. What do you think reserve. about these? What, what, do you, what do you mean don't spend it all? Because I, I think I know what you mean. I'm just curious. I'm Don't the stay theater. peaked. Right. To, to be peaked, you, you know, you have all this gold. If you want to stay peaked, you have to keep spending it, spending it, spending right. it. You're going to run out. You've got to save some. Keep some in reserve. I'm sorry, this just sounds like poetry to me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's what you've learned, it's what you've practiced, and then it's what you've learned from others. At, at that level of yours. And there's not a lot of people at the level that you've lived your life. No. Jack Lane would be one, in my opinion, that's lived a long fulfillment, active life. Yeah. Well, Jack was a great guy. I mean, uh, there's nothing bad I can say about him. You know, he, he really fulfilled everything he did. Robbie's my training partner, Robbie Robinson, who's 78 now. Great guy, Robbie. I have a lot of respect for Robbie, a lot of admiration. And he talks about a lot of things. It's like you guys are two different people, but your warrior mentality or the belief of how you train, live life is so on the same plane. And it seems like if I took away your guys' years of knowledge compounded and you give that to a 20 year old or a 30 year old, they wouldn't even comprehend it. No. You have to go through it. You said you had your shirt on two weeks out. Yeah, I never exposed myself in the gym. Is why? Well, you know, it's it's like the great unveil. <laughs> you know, you don't you don't walk around that way, and then it's the whole thing about it is you have to shock people. You know, when you go on the show, you have to the unveiling should be exactly that. They should be astonished. You look so good, and the way you do that is you don't give it away ahead of time. You know, you don't, you don't uh, do all this publicity where you're posing in public and everything and everybody sees you, then they know what to expect. I, I think of it as an artist, how the, if you try to look at an artist's picture, yeah. they keep it covered. Yeah. And especially back in the days. Yeah, know, or it's it, this way and the subjects over there. And hey, can I see it? No, 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 no. Yeah. It's not finished, it's not finished. No, no, it's and, never finished. And I think the same way as you do is keep it covered don't show it until it's that day. 
until it's just perfect. And then Joe Weider also said that to me. He says, never show up or show it if you're not in shape. Don't even show it. Well, it's also a psychological game as well, too. Like in Pumping Iron, for example, they talk about just messing with each other backstage, not giving anyone an advantage and not showing anyone what you look like doesn't give them any advantage over you when you just like, boom, it's like, yeah. oh, crap. I remember being in shows, having a guy take his shirt off. You're like, hey, I'm just going to go home. First time I saw him, there was this big anticipation of him showing up. This is an 89 in the Mr. Natural Mr. California. California. We're all hanging around, having a good time, and we're hearing about this guy from Washington State. I'm like, whatever. So he comes walking by, doesn't acknowledge any of us, and goes down on this little set of stairs with his posse. I'm like, I'm going to go see what this guy looks like. So I walked down, I looked down the steps, and he had taken his shirt off and was pumping up with some bands or something on the door. I came back to all the guys. I'm like, yeah, let's just go home. <laughs> it's over. Let's just leave. <laughs> and and it, he ended up winning the thing. And it, But it was funny because that's exactly what happened. He just walked by and you just see this big body not knowing what's underneath. Yeah. And then when you see what's underneath, it just takes the wind out of your sails. Like, oh. That reminds me of the 67 uh, Mr. Universe contest in Montreal. I went up there. You know, I really wasn't ready for it, to tell you the truth. I was saving for, you know, a little bit into the future. And Sergio shows, shows up at the last minute and he just psyched everybody out just yeah I mean, he was in shape too of course but he just blew everybody's mind it was incredible so what did you think when you saw him when you saw him show up oh i knew what he would look like i yeah. had seen him before i was friends with sergio he told me he says how did he put it? he says you're going to win the top titles because you know how to do so he said you know how to do, do. <laughs> you know how to pose and all yeah. that. So uh, I put a great deal of stock into that. So he was one of, you know, another guy was Ricky Wayne. Mm. Ricky was really good in his day. Of course, he was more literary than, you know, into the physique thing. You know, he, he was a very good writer. Huh. But those are the guys, Sergio, Ricky Wayne. Uh, who else? What did you think of Surgeon Bray? I thought what he had was good, but he didn't have everything, you know. He didn't really... Standing there, he looked great, but he really didn't have much legs. He had pecs, deltoids, arms, not a great lat spread. When he posed, he lost a lot of it. You know, but doing like side chest and trying all that stuff, hard, hard to beat him on that. But... Uh, yeah, I was in contest. What was it? Seventy-two Olympia, my first Olympia. I just won NABA Universe Pro Universe, and I went from London the next day to Essen, Germany, which was where it was. And everybody was in Essen. Sergio was there. Arnold was there. Sergio was better than Arnold. Wow. Arnold was like that was seventy-two. Seventy-two. Arnold was maybe a month out. Wow. You know, he was wasn't really ripped like like Sergio was. Sergio had a lot going on. But it was in Germany. No. Come on. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. It took me a second. I got gotcha. you. Well, the home field advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. I got a question. Who, who did you look at back then that took bodybuilding to another level, intelligence?